G'day, my name is Ricky Dunn, and this is a video about two months that my wife Nat and I are spending in Guatemala. We're splitting our time between a small village on the deepest lake in Central America called Lake Atitlan, and a property just outside the UNESCO World Heritage listed city of Antigua. This is our first time in Guatemala, but I am in love with this country already. It's home to a rich and vibrant culture. It's really colorful. There's 37 volcanoes, one which is behind me, and they make for some awesome landscapes. I want to show you some of that and try to give you a feel for what life has been like, starting in Lake Atitlan. Flying into the capital of Guatemala City, the first thing I noticed is how green this country is. And that was the case for most of the three and a half hour journey to Panahachal, which is a gateway to all of the towns on Lake Atitlan. Three dormant volcanoes dominate the landscape here. This is the deepest lake in Central America and one of Guatemala's most popular tourist destinations. It's been described as the Lake Como of Central America no doubt for its natural beauty. It's July and the wet season. But most mornings you wouldn't know it. The sky is blue, the sun is warm, and Lake Atitlan is at its most beautiful. That normally changes in the afternoon as clouds roll in, bringing rain and the occasional storm. Spanish is the official language, but over 20 different Mayan dialects are spoken. Sadly, my Spanish is no bueno, and most of the locals don't speak English. While it's easy enough to get by, my biggest regret is having not learned more Spanish before coming here. I'd love to have had more meaningful conversations with the people. So there are loads of incredible towns to visit along the lake, but to get anywhere, you have to go by water. While kayaking is one option, most of the time people opt for the local ferry service. It's fairly cheap, and it's also pretty efficient. The only practical way to travel around the lake is by public ferry, with a journey costing 25 quetzales, the equivalent of about three US dollars. A trip can be as quick as five minutes or as long as 45 minutes, and there's normally multiple stops. The locals pay less, and it seems there's no haggling unless you want to charter a private boat. I'll begin this tour around the lake in the town of San Marcos, La Laguna. Dog driving the streets is a common sight in Guatemala, and San Marcos is no exception. It's characterized by narrow leafy streets, with a mix of locals, backpackers, and those chasing spiritual enlightenment. I enjoyed coming here and made the commute a number of times to get the lake's best sourdough bread. Each time checking out different shops and restaurants along the way. Nearby is the small village of Sanuna, which is an area best known for its organic farming. A five minute tuk-tuk ride up the hill from the town jetty took us to this permaculture farm, where we purchased delicious fresh produce and had a meal made entirely of the ingredients from their garden. On the western side of the lake, below the volcano bearing its name, is the town of San Pedro, La Laguna. Mm -hmm. 
San Pedro is a popular town that's frequented by backpackers. But you still get a good look into local life. As you walk the streets, there are loads of different restaurants, cafes and drinking venues to tempt you. And along with shops and grocery stores, there's some huge murals and lots of colour in the streets. It's easy to see why it's a popular place. But nowhere is as colourful as my favourite town on the lake, San Juan, La Laguna. I love the greenery. This place is absolutely bursting with colour. Around every corner there seems to be a different mural or some form of vibrant street art and it really is a beautiful place. If you can pull yourself away from the holiday vibes and the dreamy streets here, there's a great hike a short walk from town. We worked up a sweat getting here, but it was worth it for what would have to be some of the best views over the lake. Nestled between two volcanoes is the town of Santiago, which was the furthest from our accommodation. Travellers often come here to see the effigy of a smoking, drinking saint called Mushamon. We opted instead to spend a day exploring the narrow streets, discovering markets that sold everything from fresh produce to electronics and crafts. And as we explored further, we found this church built atop a 1,000 year old Mayan temple and retaining the original stairs. Santiago is larger and louder than most towns on the lake, but you can still find a peaceful spot to take in the views. The town we first arrived into, and one of our most visited on the lake, was Panahachal. Everyone knows it as Pana, and it's one of the busier towns along the lake we are bound to see plenty of tourists and locals going about their business. We've often come here for shopping and to dine out, though we found this excellent restaurants all around the lake and the meal would rarely cost us more than 10 US dollars. Pana was a particularly good choice when craving international cuisine. There are plenty of takeaway options as well as markets, the biggest supermarkets on the lake and places where we could buy imported products. Finally, our local area of Santa Cruz, La Laguna. A short walk along the lake brings us to the local jetty and a few shops and restaurants. Most of the village is nestled against the hill. A rather gruelling 20 minute walk or a dollar per person in a tuk tuk. Not as many people seem to make it up here but those that do are treated to a really peaceful little village where you can buy a few groceries and eat a meal with some brilliant views over the lake. We've been spoiled during our time on Lake Atitlan, staying at this property called Sacred Tree, or Abol Sagrada in Spanish. It's named for this glorious saber tree that takes centre stage but the whole property is beautiful. We've got mountains on one side of us, the volcano and lake views on the other, and we're surrounded by lush gardens that attract loads of birds and other wildlife. They love that papaya, and having both come down with a nasty case of COVID while here, the birds and squirrels provided a welcome distraction. The staff have been incredible, they're so friendly and they've helped make our stay that extra bit special. 
at a cost of 2,500 US dollars for four weeks. This is not the cheapest option on Lake Atitlan, but you do get what you pay for. We've had a private hot tub, kayaks, a lovely swimming pool, a traditional sauna called a temezcal, and some of the best internet on the lake. Talk about living the dream. Sadly, our time in Lake Atitlan is now up. We've had an incredible month here, and it just hits this sweet spot between having everything a tourist could want and not suffering from over-tourism. Lake Atitlan made a real impression on me, and I was incredibly sad to be leaving. But of course, there's an excitement as we head to our next destination, just outside Antigua. We've arrived at our home for the next month, an off-the-grid avocado farm just outside the small village of San Cristobal El Alto. Down the hill to my left, about 500 metres, is the city of Antigua. And over my right shoulder, we have a couple of volcanoes, including Fuego, which is erupting right now and seems to be erupting every 15 or 20 minutes. It is awesome to watch. The volcano is constantly erupting, and while the morning's clear skies provide the best viewing opportunities, the views here are absolutely breathtaking, no matter what time of day. This is a fairly remote location. It's a working farm and we're hosted by a local family. Antigua is about 20 minutes away by car. To get there, we need to go through the local village of San Cristobal El Alto. A short journey in our host four-wheel drive or a 15 minute walk. It's a peaceful little village with a population of about 500 people that consists of a church, a school, a few little convenience stores, and some surprisingly good restaurants. There's only one road in and out, which made it impossible to miss the village's annual festival. We hadn't planned our stay around this, and it was a welcome surprise as celebrations went into the night. From San Cristobal Al Alto, we're able to catch an Uber for about $5 into the picture-perfect city of Antigua. You can spend days, or in our case, weeks exploring the city. The roads aren't great to walk on, but all the colorful buildings and the sensational backdrops certainly make up for it. You do need to watch your footing on these roads and they take their toll on the cars, but the city is absolutely stunning. People come from all over the world to admire the colonial Spanish architecture and this is a thriving tourist destination. But things haven't been easy here. The city was destroyed by now dormant Volcano Agua in 1527, and then again by an earthquake in 1773. The city oozes history, and it's easy to see how it's earned its UNESCO status. When the Spanish conquistadors arrived in the 1500s, they killed large numbers of Mayans and forced those left into Catholicism. The evidence is everywhere, with churches on almost every street, and religion remains a big part of life here today. When it comes to fresh food, there are local markets, supermarkets and street vendors, 
But one of the best things about being here is dining out. The food is delicious. The food really is delicious. And for an average of 10 to 15 US dollars, we've eaten incredibly well here. Every restaurant seems to have a lovely courtyard setting, even the McDonald's. Guatemala produces a lot of coffee and there's loads of great cafes to enjoy in the city. There's plenty of places to go for a drink too. Our favourite has been the breweries. Not far from the middle of town, El Bosque had the best beers we tasted in Guatemala in a really beautiful green setting. A short bus ride from town is Cervecería 14. This place is well worth the journey. The beers are top notch and they have a menu that includes delicious wood-fired pizzas. I didn't know places like this existed in Guatemala and I loved it. Twenty minutes away from the city by car is Hobbitonango, an eco theme park with obvious inspiration. It's not hard to imagine what this place might look like on a weekend, but on an overcast weekday, we had the place pretty much to ourselves and loved wandering the misty trails. However, come afternoon, we often had similar conditions at our accommodation. We're at an elevation of almost 2,000 metres above sea level and often find ourselves in or even above the clouds. There are huge grounds to explore here and loads of different trails. Waking up to this mountain fresh air and vistas like this has made for an unforgettable experience. There's no mobile coverage, but we have some of the fastest internet speeds in Antigua and all the creature comforts we could need, including a cozy fireplace for those cold nights. There's a garden we can pick fresh produce and we have a gourmet breakfast prepared for us each morning. Getting to know our hosts has been the icing on the cake for an unforgettable stay in Guatemala. That just about brings us to the end of our time in Guatemala. And while the morning sun blinds me and you watch Fuego erupt in the background, there's just a couple of things I'd like to highlight before I end this video. The first is the local people. I've got to say, I don't like putting the camera in people's faces too often unless I'm doing this for work because it just changes that dynamic a little bit. But the Guatemalans have been some of the most friendly and welcoming people I've encountered in my travels and they've made our stay here that extra bit special. And that's despite me speaking barely a word of Spanish. So I guess it's amazing what a smile, a bit of sign language and a few basic phrases can achieve. should also mention COVID because it did impact what we could do here quite a lot. There's some hikes around Lake Atitlan we would have loved to have done. It would have been brilliant to go to the top of one of these volcanoes and see some lava close up. Not to mention the rest of the country. There's Mayan ruins up in the north. There's a spectacular coastline to explore. So we have a lot of unfinished business in Guatemala. And this is definitely a place we're going to have to come back to. Finally, a note on safety, because uh, prior to coming here, we did what a lot of people probably do. Read a whole bunch of articles, some government advice, and it's very easy to get intimidated and perhaps even turned off coming here. And while there might be areas that are best to avoid, uh, staying in Lake Atitlan and Antigua, we've had a completely incident-free trip and we've never felt unsafe. We're now off to Costa Rica and we're very excited to go there. If you'd like to see what we produce, uh, you can subscribe to the channel or just follow on social media. We post a fair few updates on there these days. Uh, but that's it for now. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching, take care.